Good morning, friends, and thank you for joining me for another Sunday morning CRE lesson. We will start as usual with the lighting of the chalice. Please join me in lighting a chalice of your own. Remember to get permission to use a real candle from an adult before lighting one. We light our chalice to honor the web of all life. We honor the sun and the earth that brings life to us. We honor the plants and creatures of land, water, and air that nourish us. And we honor each other, gathered here to share the wonder of our world. This morning, we will be talking about the partnerships between ourselves and nature. We will be reading a story, and then Miss Amogany is going to be taking us on a nature walk. Today's story will be Swimming Home by Janine K. Grossmeyer. In the warm, salty waters of the Great Blue Sea, little orange and white fish called clownfish played their favorite game, chasing each other round and round, swimming as fast as they could go. Yet always they stayed close to their sea anemone home. Their sea anemone had thousands of soft white tendrils all over her body, and the tendrils were the perfect place to hide in. Alik followed his brother to well. His bright orange and white stripes outlined with black flashed as he swam through the forest of tendrils. The sea anemone's tendrils tickled while they touched Alik. He liked watching the tendrils sway back and forth as the water moved. Look, Tuel called suddenly. His side fins were going in little circles, holding him steady in one place. Here come Mother Fish and Father Fish. Alik and Tuel and their other brothers watched as Mother Fish and Father Fish slowly glided by, their side fins touching each other as they swam. Suddenly Mother Fish flicked her tail and zipped on past. Father Fish went too. A yellow striped fish with a pointy mouth was eating a tendril off the sea anemone, taking big bites. Mother and Father Fish headed straight at the strange fish and started biting it. The yellow fish swam away, and Mother and Father swam after it. What's happening? Alik asked. Zorn, one of his brothers, answered, They're protecting our sea anemone. They'll be back soon. When father and mother came home, a shrimp was following them and swam into the anemone. As soon as it touched the tendrils, the shrimp went still. What happened? Tuel asked. Our sea anemone killed the shrimp with the poison on her tendrils, Zorn said. But we swim in her tendrils every day, Alik said. The poison doesn't kill us. That's because we're her friends, Zorn said. We have a special covering on our scales that keeps us safe. Now watch. The soft white tendrils shimmered and waved. The shrimp was tossed to the middle of the sea anemone right into the circle of her open mouth. The sea anemone swallowed the shrimp whole. She was hungry, Zorn said, then swam away. Mother and father fish began gliding again. Their tails brushed against the sea anemone's tendrils, soft and gentle on their skin. Mother and father fish are so big and brave, Alik said. I can't wait until I'm big like them, but right now I'm hungry, Tuel said. They began nibbling the tiny bits of plants that clung to their sea anemone's tendrils. Tuel found a crunchy isopod, and Alik found another shrimp. But that was all, and they were still hungry. We could leave our sea anemone, Alik said. Tuel and Alik looked out into the great blue sea. Stingrays lived out there. Sharks did too. Huge dark fish with double rows of teeth lurked in the deep water. But there were also tasty things to eat. Come on, Alik said to Tuel, let's explore. With a flick of his tail he was off, swimming away from their sea anemone home. Tuel followed him, and they swam side by side, their side fins touching each other as they glided along. Farther and farther they went, away from their family and away from their sea anemone home. Alik and Tuel had never left the forest of tendrils before. They had never swum without the soft touch of their sea anemone on their fins. But Alik found another shrimp to eat, small and tasty. Tuel found plankton, little bits of green floating by. Alik and Tuel kept eating and swimming and eating some more. Then Alik stopped swimming. He looked around. Far off in the water, a dark shadow appeared. 
Dwell, Alik whispered. What's that? Tuel stopped eating and looked at the shadow. It was coming closer, weaving slowly back and forth. Shark! Tuel yelled. Swim! Go back home! Alik and Tuel turned around and flicked their tails, zipping through the water as fast as they could go, heading for their sea and enemy home. Alik didn't want to look behind him. He didn't want to know how close the shark was, because he could feel the rippling of the water. He could hear the shark getting near. Alik twitched his tail faster. Beside him, Tuel was swimming just as hard. The tendrils of their sea anemone shimmered ahead of them, soft and white and warm. They were almost home. Swim, 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 Alik chanted to himself. Swim, swim, swim. The water swirled around them. It smelled and tasted like shark, oily and dark and cold. Alik and Tuel flicked their tails extra hard. Finally, they reached their sea anemone home just in time, hiding in the soft white tendrils. The water exploded around them in bubbles as the shark turned to go. The poison of the sea anemone was keeping it away. Tuil and Alik peeked between the tendrils to look at each other. Both of them were still scared. Both of them were very glad to be home, safe with mother fish and father fish and all their brothers. Both of them were very, very glad they had a sea anemone to protect them and to be their home, and both of them knew it was their job as clownfish to take care of her. They would chase away any fish that tried to eat her tendrils. They would bring her food, and she would take care of them. Thank you for listening to the story. Now, as we go on to join Miss Amogany on her nature walk, let us all ponder how we as Unitarian Universalists can be partners with the animals and plants in the web of life the way the clownfish and the sea anemone are partners. Good afternoon. This is Mogni. I'm enjoying a nice lovely day outside, taking my dog on a walk. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon, so I figure we should soak up all the sun together. Today the activity that I put together is the uh, nature walk. So for those of you who are interested in doing this with me, all you need to do is carry a baggie and we're going to go look around and see what we can find. Here's something good. We've got lovely little flowers. Here we have some palmettos. In some regions of the world, palmettos provide shade. These little flowers here are pollinated by bees, so let's see if we can find any bees. I didn't find any bees, but I found a dog. She's helping me look for things too. Show me what you can find, Lillian. We found more trees that produce shade. They also produce oxygen. And a lot of trees can provide fruits and vegetation for us. I found the tip of an acorn. Well, it's missing the acorn part, but the acorns feed squirrels. We found a pine cone. Squirrel. Hey guys, it's another day. It's now Saturday and I figured the best way to talk about nature is in my own backyard because I'm here with my family in Houston, Texas and they have a garden and a yard full of wild animals. So this will be a whole lot of fun. Stanley! Stanley! Hi, handsome! Because there's beauty among us everywhere that we turn. And it is so important that we take a moment out of our day, all the time, to just be grateful for the, the environments that are surrounding us. Also make sure that you comment below and let me know what you found and what you learned during this exercise. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Bye. Today we learned that animals and plants of different species can help each other in interesting ways by forming partnerships. And we have thought about how we can do better to form partnerships with nature around us. Thank you for joining us today for our lesson. We'll see you guys next week.